What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? How we doing? Long time no see. <laughs> What's good? What's good, folks? How are we doing? Holy moly, what a week. What a week. Good to see you for the first time and only time this week. The kiddos are back to school and that's all that really matters. <laughs> no, they're doing good. So for those of you that have not uh, uh, been in the loop with my situation this week. So on Monday and Tuesday, I served on the district committee of ordained ministry for the, the district that I serve here in North Carolina. So I got to give local pastors the thumbs up or the thumbs down or just talk to them about how their process is going. It was wonderful. I would love to talk more in depth about it because it really was an incredible experience. I'm very thankful for it. It was great to hear from pastors around the area. Um, so they took the entire day. I got there at eight o'clock in the morning and I was there until 5.30 each day. i real tired, real tired because Monday and Tuesday was real long. Um, Monday, I get the call from my wife. Uh, hey, Quinn is sick and is, has running a fever. 101, whatever, we're going to the doctor. So I'm like, okay, well, I'm at this district thing. Like, do I need to get out of it? She was like, no. She's like, it's fine. I'll get out of school. So she gets out of school. Monday, she goes to the doctor, ear infection. The other ear looks pretty bad. So one ear looks like it has definitely an infection. The other ear is like getting there. I'm like, great. What do we do? I'm like, do I need to take Tuesday? She was like, it's fine. This thing is important. I'll take Tuesday. If she's still sick on Wednesday, you take care of her. So Monday and Tuesday, my wife stays out of work. I go to these decom things. Wednesday, the baby's better the night before. Tuesday night, she's feeling good, ready to go Wednesday morning. Mm -mm. Wednesday morning, wakes up, awful. The other ear is now infected. So now I've got to take her to the doctor, get her checked out, make sure it is actually the other ear and that it's not something else. They do blood work. They do um, uh, a double nasal swab for, for COVID and RSV and everything under the sun. Everything comes back negative. It's just a bad ear infection. Um, keep her home the entire day. She's sort of okay. Definitely cannot work because she's like miserable. Um, Thursday, she wakes up feeling good. She's doing good. Fever's gone. Amoxicillin's doing its thing. Doing good. Four o'clock. Four o'clock in the morning. Woken, woken up. Woken up to the older one who has said, I froed up. I just froed up. And we're like, what? What are you talking about? You? What do you mean you threw up? Like, what's going on? So we go into a room. It's barely anything. It looks like when a dog uh, regurgitates its food because it chokes. It doesn't look like normal throw ups. I'm like, what is going on here? I was like, this is not throw up. Like, what are you talking about? Like, you're gonna be okay. You look good. You feel fine. You're not, you're te no temperature. Do you feel like you're gonna get sick again? No, I'm not gonna get sick again. So, okay, let's, let's get you cleaned up and then go back to sleep for another hour until we need to wake up. She does so. Uh, 5.30, she wakes up. She's like, I don't feel good. And I'm like, you, you're fine. You look fine. No fever. You haven't thrown up again. You didn't really throw up to begin with. You're fine. Uh, she's like, my tummy hurts. And I'm like, your tummy hurts? Are you, are you serious? Like, are you actually going to get sick again? She's like, yeah, I'm going to get sick. She does this thing where she does her little hypochondriac self, and she just, like, tries. She's like, and it doesn't do anything because she doesn't have to. And so I was, like, not buying it. Uh, we gave her crackers. We gave her a, a fruit bar. She was like, doing good. Everything's good. My wife's about to leave. 6.30. She throws up. Not really throw up again. Kind of, but definitely wetter than the first one. She froze up. Uh, we're like, what? What do we do? I guess we got to keep her home. She's thrown up. She might have a stomach bug. We need to keep her home. This girl doesn't do anything the rest of the day. Never has like a full a full episode, um, feeling good, singing, dancing, eating everything she can, like just totally fine the rest of the day. So Thursday, my entire day, lose it because I can't take her to school. I take her here to try and work as best as I can. And she just, don't, we don't know. We think it was her food. We think she had like a little, a little food poisoning or something didn't agree with her. And it just, and she got it out and she was fine. So it's Friday. <laughs> <laughs> it's Friday, and this is my first day in the office. So, needless to say, this stream will be pretty short. 
Um, this will be, we will, we are going to do something really cool called Roleplay the Gospel, which is coming up here very soon after our Jeopardy and welcome and everything like that. Um, and then maybe we'll talk with H-Man a little bit about that after we get done trying it. And we'll see if we have any questions for H-Man that he might be able to answer. That's up to you, H-Man, if you're around your computer and wouldn't mind hopping on to, um, on to, uh, whatchamacallit, hopping on to a Discord call. So if you want to do that, then we can take questions from whoever's in the chat. And that can be that opportunity after we try um, playtesting it. Uh, you're here till 11, rock on. We definitely won't take that long. So we'll, we'll, we'll get into it and we'll go through it and we'll have fun. And I'm looking forward to it. Uh, but then that will probably be the end of our stream today. Um, I was going to try and stream the full three hours, but I got to be real with you guys. <laughs> I don't feel great. <laughs> so odds are I'm getting sick. Now I'm going to be sick. I'm going to throw it up. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna not feel good. So, hi, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, let's see. I wish we could check ear infections at home. It would be nice. Uh, Ninety percent, I know it's an ear infection, but you have to go to the doctor again. Ear infections do suck. Sometimes we do what we have to in order to get a home day. Yep, the commitment to faking an ear infection is Oscar worthy. Yeah, it was, it was a lot. What's up, Will Singley? How we doing? Um, we're gonna we're gonna role play the gospel here in just a minute. First, we're gonna do some Jeopardy because we uh, we haven't been back on the on the on the grind in a while. Um, but welcome in. Glad y'all are here. We're trying something new here at Checkpoint that you'll probably see if you stick around for about thirty minutes. Um, if you're not subscribed, uh, I turned off pre rolls because I don't like pre rolls. And turned on mid rolls, but now I turned on uh, Nutty. I don't know if you guys follow Nutty on YouTube, um, but he built a little advertisement uh, notification thing. So hopefully it's gonna work, and we're gonna see a little thing pop up in this corner that's gonna say ad starting in blah 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 blah, and then it'll have the duration of the ads, and there will be a little bar, a little purple bar that will count down up here to tell us when ads are over. It's a test. It's something we're still figuring out. We'll see if it works and if it does what it needs to do. Um, but that's the new game plan. We're going to try something different. Um, I don't like ads any more than the next person, but I, I'm, I'm interested in maximizing. I'm min-maxing our advertisements, as they say. Min-maxing. Very appropriate for our TTRPG discussion. So with that, let's do some Jeopardy. Two questions. If you've not done our Jeopardy game before, um, it is first come, first serve. You do not have to answer in the form of a question, and you get the points you get, and you get on the leaderboard potentially. So uh, we'll see who ends up on the leaderboard today. We have two questions that I'll, you know, that I'll ask. The first thing that I see in the chat that is correct will be the one who receives the award points. Um, and then I'll read off the leaderboard once everything is said and done. So again, first person to type in the chat is the one to get it. Please focus on me. Thank you. Uh, let's get into it. First Jeopardy question worth $200 is, uh, category is, down in Africa. The answer, this capital of Kenya lies at an elevation of 5,500 feet, making it a natural sister city to Denver. This capital of Kenya lies at an elevation of 5,500 feet, making it a natural sister to Denver. Does anybody know the capital of Kenya? I would never. I would never. I wouldn't have even known that Kenya had a capital. Oh, Sneaky Pigs bringing in the 200 points. It is indeed Nairobi. Now, I do know, uh, thought it was going to be Bible questions. No, this is just straight up the Jeopardy uh, calendar. You know, the little, like, calendars, the little daily calendars? Uh, so, no. Unfortunately, no. If there is a Bible Jeopardy, if there is a Bible Jeopardy calendar out there, I'm down for it. Uh, Sneaky, that's another 200 points to Sneaky. Continuing to inch his way up the leaderboard. Next question, another down in Africa. Category is down in Africa for $600 this time. The answer, species that need protection include this animal. Africa has fewer of them than their shorter pal, the elephant. Species that need protection include this animal. Africa has fewer of them than their shorter pal, the elephant. Ooh, rhinos. I don't know a rhino to a, a rhino to elephant a height comparison, but it is indeed the giraffe, H-Man. I got it backwards at first, too. All right, H-Man with the six hundo. All right, that does not, is not enough to put you up the leaderboard. <laughs> Who are Madagascar cast members? Yep, indeed. 
Okay, here is our leaderboard. Our top three on the leaderboard are Zando with 10,800 points. Second up, we have uh, Sneaky Pig with 4,600 points. And in third place, we have maybe 30 bats with 4,000 points. Very nice. Chats in the clap to all our participants today, especially Bubba, who has now gotten all the points. All the points for Bubba. All right, folks, we're going to play, we're going to play uh, table, uh, role play the gospel. Zando's not very good at trivia. Yeah, Zando, Zando's just, you know, he tries really hard, but just not very good at it. Welcome in, Perry. Going to be catching up on some continuing ads. They're going to lurk today, but had to support my man, H-Man. Absolutely. All right. Um, so what is role play the gospel? Let's start with that obvious question. Um, I'm going to turn down the music just a little bit. I just want to be Zando at one freaking thing. Is that too much to ask me to, Bubba? That is a that is a hashtag relatable moment because I'm right there with you. Uh, what is Roleplay the Gospel? Roleplay the Gospel is something out of the Virginia Conference of the United Methodist Church that is super cool, worked on by our one and only H-Man. Uh, it is available for download for free. We'll drop that link several times down in the, uh, down in the description because we would love for you guys to download this and do it for yourself. Um, but this is a super cool project that they've been working on for quite a while. Um, in order for us to have a Lenten practice that is also a creative solo TTRPG experience. Um, it's super cool. The art looks great. Um, there you go. There's the link, vaumc.org slash RP the G. RP the G. Um, I'm not going to read this to you because I know that you guys have eyeballs. So we're just going to walk through the basic idea of what this is. The first question might be, what is Lent and what is Ash Wednesday? Ash Wednesday marks off the Lenten season. It's where we start the Lenten season. Lent is a season of 40 days uh, in between Ash Wednesday leading up to Holy Week, uh, which is Easter. So the Holy Week is the, the full thing of Easter. And... Uh, this is it. This is all the fun stuff that we're going to do for it. So uh, 40 days leading up to it. This is an intentional practice during that time. So traditionally, the Lenten practice might be to give up something for Lent. Um, so maybe you would give up, uh, you would practice fasting by giving up some kind of food in order to be more intentional in prayer during that time. And then on Sundays, you would have a break day um, where you'd be able to celebrate during worship. And then the rest of the time, the rest of the week, you would uh, you would get back to your practice. This might be a time of time. This might be a way of fasting your time. So uh, rather than sacrificing food for Lent this year, consider sacrificing your time to do this Lenten practice of a TTRPG. I mean, let's be real. Let's be real. How? What could be much better than uh, than play like like actually playing a TTRPG as your Lenten practice? I think this is pretty dope. I think it's super cool. Um, the basic idea. So unlike other TTRPGs where you might. Uh, play with a group. This is actually a solo TTRPG. So this is a one player experience where you are going to be practicing creative writing. You're going to create a character that's going to be alive during Holy Week. Uh, that's going to be best friends with Nimrod, the biblical character Nimrod. And you and Nimrod are going to walk through 40 days of adventures and creative writing leading up to um, Easter. So that's the practice. That's what we're going to be doing. The first thing we got to do is, of course, character creation. So we're going to do that first and foremost. Um, and then once we create our character, we're going to do two days, I think. Um, there's a basic like gist of how to actually play the game and the things you'll need. Here's the list. Again, I'm not going to have to read all these things to you, but I will read this list because why not? Uh, for any of you that are using this as like a how to play guide, um, you do need something to write on. You could do a Word doc or you could have a actual like tangible notebook. I've got mine from St. Paul School, uh, St. Paul, <laughs> St. Paul School of Theology. I never went here. I just have a notebook from there. Um, a six sided die. I've got mine and I also have my fancy, fancy dice tray here. So I've got a six sided die. I don't have my fancy blue one because it's in the gotcha pond. Have a class at 10. I got to go. All right. Thanks, Will. Thanks for hopping in. Be sure to go download this. Uh, I'll post the VOD of this later so you can watch if you want to watch our little how to play session here. But thanks for being here. Appreciate you. Um, you do need this actual like download for the prompts. Um, and then they recommend a childlike sense of wonder and imagination. You can also have an adult sense of wonder and imagination if you want to. That's just kind of up to you. Uh, a Bible, physical or digital edition. Uh, St. Paul School of Eulogy. Yes, indeed. Uh, uh, Bible, physical or digital and internet connection. I don't know if you actually need internet connection. Maybe that's like to download the thing. I don't know. Maybe I'll discover more of this as we go on. That was the one that I was like not sure about. So we can ask H-Man about that. Um, 
So yes, there are gonna be prompts on each page. Uh, there are two different levels of prompts. One is not mandatory, but one is like the experience. And then the other is a bonus thing. So that's why we're doing two days because not always is there gonna be the bonus thing. Um, so we are, we're gonna be doing prompt one where we actually meet Nimrod and start our story. Uh, and then we're gonna do, I'm thinking prompt four where there is that explore more option. So that's what we'll do. We'll do these two, uh, one and four. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, yeah, so that's explaining how to do that. Uh, what are the D6s for, you might ask. Here's what the D6s are for. You probably already saw it. Um, but with each day, there's also gonna be role for reflection time. So these are a, uh, a moddable and experienceable thing that is going to allow for you to have your own particular experience at TTRPG. Not only are you gonna be creative writing your own experience, um, but you are also going to be doing something extra each day based off of these rolls. So you're gonna roll a D6, whatever it lands on is what you do. And there are different levels of things that they recommend doing. They walk through each one of these up here. Um, but again, I'm not gonna to read to you. So feel free to read through them. Maybe we'll do, I don't know, we could do one of each, I guess. We could do one of each, we shall see. Um, but at the very least, um, there, there are six different options that are gonna come up each week. And sometimes they're more creative than others. Sometimes they're just straightforward, exactly what this says on the page. Sometimes you can see there are some weird ones in there, like uh, put figs or fig newtons on your grocery list. So sometimes there'll be fun things in there. Um, if you want to, you could even do all of them or you could divvy them out, that would be fun. So like if you wanted to do this with your family uh, or, or with your spouse or with uh, just whoever, um, you could, or with a small group, mm, uh, you could have like somebody do each of these. So you work on your prompts individually, um, you come together, you like reflect together, and then you all roll out uh, a D6. So. I don't know, it could be fun. There's other things to do. There's some fun, interesting um, aspects of this that should be entertaining and interesting. And I would encourage you pursue more of these things. Okay, cool. With that, we got to create our character and then we're gonna do our first prompt. So let me check the chat, make sure there's no questions. Alive during Holy Week. Does this mean that we get to unalive them after? Gelatinous Cube, Ice Breathing Dragon, Crippling Shame. You know, I don't have the full thing downloaded. I just have the preview. So maybe that is day 40, you know, I don't know. Uh, now one to have you break dancing or screaming, I declare bankruptcy in the middle of the synagogue. I like it. I like it. And hey, you know, you could always come up with uh, with uh, with a creative mods to this. I think I imagine H Man supports a certain level of, of modification to the actual playstyle. Okay. Childlike sense of wonder, I forgot that was in there, a little youth and revolt callback. No, I love it. I love it. The childlike sense of wonder is very fun. Okay, let's make our character. So of course this is Checkpoint Church, so we're definitely gonna be calling them Check uh, because that is what we do. So let's call them Check. All right, so we've got Check uh, and we need a little bit of background for Check. So I'm gonna say the first thing is we are good friends with Nimrod. So uh, since since Check is a an embodiment of myself, I have been in the church my entire life. I'm a cradle Methodist. I've been uh, in the Methodist church since I was born. So I'm gonna say, that I, I've known Nimrod since the very beginning. Um, I have I have been in the church. Maybe we went to Sunday school together. Uh, met Nimrod at church. At synagogue, excuse me. At synagogue. Um, grew up together. Uh, I am a pastor, so it might be appropriate of me to be one of the, uh, maybe even a Pharisee. That would be kind of fun. That would be kind of fun to be like a be like a bad guy. <laughs> That'd be interesting. I'm starting as a rogue. <laughs> I mean, I think that makes sense. You know, there's something to it. As far as like character creation, they give you a lot of liberty. So I think I'll be a Pharisee. That would be fun. So I'm going to be a Pharisee. Um, uh, Pharisee name check. Uh, what else? So I'm definitely working in the church, so I'm probably busy. Let's see if there's anything else that we need to do. Do I have a family? No, no family, not in this narrative. I don't know if the Pharisees had families or not, so I feel like I can't I can't adequately say. Uh, single in real life, their parents and siblings all live far away. Uh, Sam decides they want to imagine what it would be like to be the head of the family, so they decide Lyra will have a spouse and two children. 
Lastly, what is your character like? Are they patient and always looking after others? Uh, we're gonna say we're gonna say that uh, Czech is an open Pharisee. Czech is a Czech is uh, very progressive, <laughs> very open, uh, reconciling a reconciling Pharisee. Uh, somebody that is doing their best and trying to learn and grow and expand their theology. We'll say that. Uh, an open Pharisee uh, that is uh, that is that is curious about Jesus. Um, uh, is nervous about the church's response to his ministry. And uh, hmm, not firmly, but I'm going to say and like questioning. Not questioning. That's not even the word I want to use. Conflicted and conflicted because been in church all life. Why use why use many words when few do trick? And conflicted because been in church whole life. Does not like to see the church behaving badly. Uh, let's see. And what should they look like? Uh, solid office reference. Thank you. So the question now becomes, what do they look like? I'm going to say that they look just like moi. Because I could make them look like Checky, but then they might get some strange looks. If they're just this giant purple smiley face floating around, uh, uh, floating around Jerusalem, I feel like that would probably not be fantastic. So for for the sake of time, we're gonna say look like look alike me, look alike nerd Pastor Nate. All right, two prompts. We're gonna go for day one and see what we get for our first prompt and begin our creative writing exercise. Um, so ideally, you would have a notebook. You'd be writing down things that you write out. You could also type it out if you'd prefer to do that. You could even do, uh, do dictation if you wanted to do like voice to text so that you can uh, uh, creatively imagine it, speak it out loud, and then have it written down. Um, I think there are a lot of options as far as what you want to do for the actual like implementation of the thing. But let's let's explore prompt one, shall we? So prompt one, this is day one. Let's say uh, it is it is currently next Thursday, I believe. I feel like I would have read about a giant smiley face. Maybe it's extra apocryphal. Agreed. Super apocrypha. Yep, the book of Checkpoint. Uh, the book of Twitch. Yeah. The lesser read, lesser read book of the apocrypha. Okay, prompt one, meeting Nimrod. This is for next Thursday, I assume. Do we consider the day after Ash Wednesday or is prompt one for Ash Wednesday, H man? That might be an important question. So this would be for next Thursday. Uh, meeting Nimrod. Your satchel is packed and you are waiting for your friend, Nimrod. You've made plans to walk together to Jerusalem. Nimrod is late again, as usual. You've known Nimrod for as long as you can remember. You see a figure approaching and hear Nimrod's voice. I'm coming, I'm late, but I'm coming. You see that their arms are overflowing with figs. A fig falls and rolls to a stop at your feet. Figs were on sale at the market. You know how I love figs. Do you have a basket? What did you pack for your trip? So... Uh, assumably, I live in town, um, but maybe I should maybe I should go back and read the actual because I didn't know I traveled in from town. In Jerusalem, approaching and during Jesus's last days and resurrection, but not everything is decided for you. Okay, so no, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine with this. Uh, I am. I live in Jerusalem, so I didn't pack much. I'm packing pretty light today. I imagine I have all of my uh, my my priestly accoutrement. Uh, you're from Myrtle Beach, yes. I actually I brought my uh, Mystic Quest or whatever it was called. <laughs> I brought my wand from Mystic, Mystic Quest, and I'm wondering where all those cues are. I'm looking for a cue to start <laughs> waving at. <laughs> oh man, it's been a long time since I've been to Myrtle. Oh boy, dirty Myrtle. Okay, uh, let's see. I imagine I didn't pack, so I'm gonna say religious accoutrement. So this is gonna be day one. I packed my I packed my religious accoutrement. I've got my I've got whatever I, I checked out of the. Uh, how do you spell accoutrement? Why did I have to go with such a tough word? Um, religious accessories. Let's go with that. I packed my religious accessories. I have um, whatever I rented from the uh, the local the local uh, uh, library. So I have my I have my library books. 
out of the out of the actual accoutrement. I think that's right. I think that's right, Stephen. I think you nailed it. Um, I've got all my stuff from the library that I actually checked out some some readings, some letters, some things like that to go over and to and to peruse at my own at my own uh, time. I don't, I don't know if I'd have a basket for the figs. I'm gonna say that uh, I always keep like an extra like priestly hat, like a priestly cap of some sort. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna hand my extra cap, my extra hat uh, to to my friend Nimrod, and I'm gonna have him put the figs in there. The real question is, did you spell accessories right? Inquiring minds want to know. I did. I did. We're good. I spelled it just like Steven did right there. Uh, so I have an extra cap. I hand that over to my friend Nimrod, and I say, hey, listen, it's okay that you're late. Uh, the good news is that you're here. Um, oop, oop. Stream avatars just crashed on me. That's always fun. Let's see if it'll open back up. We can't have a stream without pocket mans. I think it updated on Steam. You get your bonus for your next check, check. Checks check is chock full. Dope. So I hand my extra cap over to Nimrod and uh, allow Nimrod to uh, to use that for the overflowing with figs. I'm also gonna I like figs personally, so I'm gonna I'm gonna grab myself a fig and I'm gonna pop that in my mouth and enjoy um, one of the figs. I'm gonna say uh, this is uh, <laughs> appropriate for a Pharisee. I'm gonna say this is your uh, this is your tax for using my hat. <laughs> uh, and um, then I'm gonna ask what Nimrod is uh, the plan for the day. I'm gonna assume that since Nimrod brought a bunch of figs with him. Um, that he had a plan for them. So I'm going to say, uh, in addition to that, I think we ought to. I think we ought to see uh, how many more of those figs were on sale at the market. So I'm going to. We're going to reverse tail. We're going to go right back to the market because I'm a generous Pharisee. I'm going to go right back and I'm going to uh, buy up the rest of the figs, fill up the cap to the brim, and we're going to go and start handing them out around town. Especially because I see that tomorrow. Um, we're going to see Blind Bartimaeus. I'm going to say that I'm a, I'm a friendly Pharisee that tries to give to the community, uh, tries to help anybody that might need it. So I'm going to start going around and handing out figs to like kids on the street that are playing and roughhousing um, and anybody that I see that looks hungry, uh, maybe on the side of the road or folks that are, are serving up a meal. I'm going to say, would you like a, like an extra like fig with your meal or something like that? A little, a little amouche bouche, that kind of thing. And yeah, I thought that's a good day. Me and Nimrod have a good day of being generous in the community. We love it. We love being generous. Uh, is that is that Toad from the Super Mario movie, Chovy? <laughs> How do I get that emote? Who has that emote? Who is it that's got the Goomba? Chovy, I'm subscribing. I gotta subscribe to you, Chovy. I'm gonna mark that down. Tier two, tier two, Chovy. You're you're bleeding me dry, Chovy. All right, I gotta remember that. I'm writing it down. I'm writing it down. The Goomba, the Goomba. That's great, dude. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> it's such a good, it's such a good bit. And Super Mario movie had some moments like that that just made me laugh. Who's the Pharisee now? Exactly. Oh, oh, how the turntables. All right, uh, let's do a roll for reflection. So we do this each day, and this pages are these two. So let's go ahead and do a roll for reflection and see what we got. I'm gonna give us, a, I'm gonna give us a good old roll. I love, I love the the lack of face down, top down cam here. We got a one, a nat one. Silence for reflection. That's like the only one that doesn't work on a Twitch stream. Um, so let's go for another one. <laughs> if if you were to roll that one, then you should probably pause and contemplate for a little bit. Um, try and turn off all music, turn off all the things, um, and just kind of chill for a bit and contemplate. Just consider, sit in the moment, listen to the spirit, uh, allow for that to be an, an experiential moment of silence. Uh, okay, let's try again. A two. All right, choose an item from the story and write a note about its meaning. Oh, let's research. I love research. Okay, so let's, let's learn more about a fig. Let's learn about the fig. Let's learn about the ancient fig. Do you think ancient fig will come up with anything? Ancient fig, the ancient fig tree. Hey, wow, that actually did something. Well, I'm gonna do some research about figs. An iconic Greek, Greek fruit since ancient times. The ancient figs may be the first cultivated crops. The discovery of figs is an 11,400-year-old house near the ancient city of Jericho, 
Maybe evidence uh, of the discovery. Oh, I see. The discovery of figs in an 11400 year old house near the ancient city of Jericho may be evidence that cultivated crops came centuries before the first farmers planted cereal grains. Archaeologists in Israel discovered the figs in an excavated house in a village called Geigel 1. That's dope. Yes, that's super cool. Bing check. I should have had, I should have had a conversation with Bing AI. The fruits were mutant figs growing on a rare kind of tree that isn't pollinated by insects and won't reproduce unless someone takes a cutting and plants it. According to Harvard anthropologists, generations of people must have lived around wild fig trees until people, people figured out how to grow these mutants. It's generally women who do uh, gathering in hunting and gathering societies, and you know years of experience would tell them exactly how the plants behaved. Writing in the journal Science, Bar Yosef and colleagues in Israel say these figs may now be the first cultivated crops. But he suspects the transition to domesticated crops, whether barley, oats, or figs, was a slow process. The fact that the figs were already domesticated means that humans were enjoying this practice of cutting branches and sticking them in the ground to be new trees. You don't get plants like figs domesticated if you don't start planting it systematically again and again. I learned something! This is already good! This is already great! This is already a fantastic thing! I mean, I, I've, I've learned that figs were real old and that they may have been the first ever cultivated thing. The first ever, like, intentionally cultivated fruit. That's fascinating. I love to know that. I've always wondered why they were so popular in Greek culture and in the in the in the Bible, but now I know that it was just uh, it was a thing that was so popular and so well done that it was just the thing, the thing. You have fig packs in the appendix of the game. We have a hyperlink to fig packs. Well, I I don't have the full game downloaded, but I need to now. I need more fig packs. Hashtag fig packs. Um, did you know that? Did you know that there was one discovered eleven thousand four hundred year old house? Because now I know that. I know that. I know a fig fact. I know one fig fact, and I'm going to make it my goal now to know fig facts every day. So I'm going to try and learn a new fig fact every day for Lent. That's going to be a new thing. Bing got a D D20 covered in 20s. Just 20s. 20s on every side. Exclusive 20s. Okay. The fig bing theory. <laughs> oh, that's a tough one. All the figs in Fig Newtons are, are the first figs ever planted. That's why they are so dry. I love that they're mutants, too. You made me think of it with Newtons there. Uh, fig Mutants is a very fun product. I think I might go make a, uh, a Fig Mutant um, parody. Like, I might go Photoshop a Fig Mutant. There are a lot of fig facts to be learned. Well, I've learned one, and I'm ready for the rest of them. And thus, the fig facts lore of Checkpoint Church is born. I think we need to make a, a, like a randomized um, stream elements command. Or you can like exclamation point fig and it'll pull up one of the fig facts. I'm gonna write that down too. That's hilarious. Okay, let me write down fig facts. That's gonna take so much work. That's so silly. And I love it. That's a great command. Well, that look, it's already working. It's already working. It's already working. Uh, the first prompt has got me thinking, it's got me considering, it's got me contemplating, and I'm learning something new. I love it. I love it. I feel like I'm in character. I feel like I am the Pharisee check, and uh, I love it. I'm here for it. I'm all about it. That's a great first day. I still don't know, H-Man, if you responded, is this Ash Wednesday, or is this the first day of Lent, which is Thursday? That's an important question, because I don't know. Um, but this is the first prompt anyway. So there we go. First prompt out of the way. I love it. I love it. That's so fun. What a great start. Um, let's go now to a prompt that has the explore more option. So we're going to do prompt four, more figs, and we're going to do the explore more after. So we're going to do prompt four, then we're going to do explore more, then we'll do another roll for reflection, and then we'll have H-Man on to chat. Some figs are even purplish, so it goes with your theme. We need a purple fig. We need the purple fig. Ash Wednesday, if you were to play, play one prompt a day for Lent. Okay, so we've done Ash Wednesday's prompt. I would encourage you, again, download uh, vaumc.org slash rp the g, rp the g. Uh, download that that uh, file, and you guys can get in on the prompts, too. Start them next Wednesday and, uh, and make it happen. There we go. Thank you, Sneaky. Uh, so go download that. Do our friend H-Man a favor and also get something out of it. Get more fig facts. Get hashtag, hashtag fig facts, dude. It's dope. Okay, prompt four, the curse of the fig tree. You awaken and are greeted by the sun. Praise the sun. You remember the sights from the day before. Can you believe Jesus has come to Jerusalem? I feel conflicted about it. I feel conflicted about it because I've heard a lot about this Jesus and a lot of my church and Pharisee folks are not big fans. So I'm a little nervous. I'm a little nervous that Jesus is in town. I don't know how this is going to go. Things could go really poorly. 
Nimrod has asked to meet outside the city to see if you could catch another glimpse of Jesus on his way from Bethany. You see Nimrod waving to you on a hill near a fig tree. Read Mark 11, 12 through 14. Let me go in my Bible. Bible time. Bible time. Okay, okay, Bible time. Bible time. Mark 11, 12 through 14. Turned right past it. Okay. Mark 11, 12 through 14. On the following day. Oh, this is, uh, let's see. This is the uh, NRSV. The NRSV, of course. I'm a, good, I'm a good cradle Methodist, as we've already said. On the following day, when they came from Bethany, he was hungry. Jesus was hungry. Seeing in the distance a fig tree in leaf, he went to see whether perhaps he would find anything on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. He said to it, may no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard it. The exchange between Jesus and the fig tree leaves, Nimrod stunned fig tree leaves. Fig tree leaves is confusing to me. I'm already, I'm already, fig tree leaves, leaves, fig tree leaves, leaves, Nimrod stunned for a moment. As you stare up at the tree, Nimrod begins following the disciples towards Jerusalem. Do you follow Nimrod, eager to see what Jesus does next, or take a moment to stop and think about the tree? Record what you share with Nimrod and what you think Jesus will do next, or record your thoughts about this tree that Jesus has cursed as you take a moment to stop and stare. I think I'm going to contemplate the tree. I want to contemplate the tree. I am. Uh, I like trees a lot, and I like nature a lot. And I don't know in my like mind what happened to the tree because I think there are like two ways of my interpretation. Like one, nothing, nothing happened. So I have these two lemon trees um, that I've been growing since I graduated college. Like not seminary, college. Um, so they are. <laughs> they cannot. They're eight years old. I've kept these trees for eight years. So these trees are eight years old. I grew them straight up from a lemon seed from a lemon I bought from the supermarket. Um, and so I, 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 I did this. I bought this tree. Pre-roll pre -roll ads are disabled for 30 more minutes. Yes, they're, 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 they should be advertised or blah, blah, whatever. So I have two lemon trees. Um, I've been growing them for eight years and I cannot get them to produce any fruit. Um, I keep them outside during the summer. I keep them inside during the winter. They have grown and grown and grown. They are big, but they are still potted. I wanted to try to do portable potted lemon trees, which I've seen people do before. I'm sure I saw it on Pinterest. And the fruitless tree just looks like any other tree. But a cursed tree, like I feel like if I were making that for a video game, it would be like shriveled and like brown and black and like almost like Grinch-esque. It would look like Susian level of like, curled branches and like gnarled bits and pieces. And I feel like it wouldn't look good. So I'm wondering like in my mind's eye, which it should be. Should it be a, should it be a shriveled tree or should it just look like a normal tree that nobody can tell? Because I also think there's something in the gospel there, right? Where we talk about like, um, um, how the vines will produce no fruit if they're not attached to the root, which is Jesus. Um, they have to be cut away. It's not like they just shrivel and fall off. They have to be cut away. They have to be pruned off. Um, and so I wonder if they should just look no different. If it's if it's just like the 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 biblical parallel of it just looks the same, just no difference. Let's see if I can find. Let's see. If, let's do more research. More research. Uh, let's look up um, the cursed fig tree icon. Let's see if there's any iconography around this thing. Okay, so everybody has it looking pretty fine. Some people have it with the leaves falling off of it. That's kind of cool. One of the icons has the leaves just straight up falling off of it. A lot of them have the leaves looking fine. None of them have the shriveled and gnarled branches like I, like I had in my head cannon. But I like I like the image of the leaves straight up shooting off of the branches. I'm going to download this image. I'll show you guys. This is what I'm seeing. And I like this. I like this a lot. So this is the fig tree icon. I'm sorry, I don't have attribution rights. I don't know who made this. 
but this is one particular icon of the cursing of the fig tree. And I love how the branches or the, the leaves are just like yeeting out. Like they're just gone. Most icons are safe. Yeah, well, I'm also, you know, this is, we've, we've certainly done uh, copyright images on our streams before. Um, but they're just like straight up, just like yeeting off the tree. And I think that's super fascinating. Now I do wanna know what's up, what's up with Jesus' hand? Is that like Holy Spirit power? Is that what that's supposed to be? I think that's supposed to be like Holy Spirit power coming out of his hand, which is super interesting that they would put that in the icon. I do find it really interesting. Some icons, um, Holy Spirit, activate. Some some icons have the disciples with their saintly crowns, but this particular iconographer has decided against it. Isn't that curious? Why would that be the case? Why would they choose not to uh, present the disciples as, as saintly? Maybe because the spirit had not descended upon them at this point in the story? Maybe? I don't know. You wouldn't... Like, technically, the dove, right, descending upon Jesus, you wouldn't take away his saintliness. You wouldn't take away his halo. Hmm. That's curious. That's very curious. I don't know why that is. I don't know why they would do that. Um, but I do... I, the the main point, pre-Pentecost, that's, that's a good... That's the best guess I got. I got nothing else. Um, super curious about the leaves. I think that was the point, and I feel like I feel vindicated to see the leaves yeeting off the branches. Um, so I'm here for that. Okay. Uh, so that's what I, that's what I reflect on. I think I like look at this, I look at this barren tree that the leaves have just straight up yeeted to the ground that have shot off like pellets here and, uh, and just contemplate it. I just contemplate and consider what does this mean? What's the deal? What's going on with this tree? I'm going to question like why I've always questioned the scripture of like, like, why? Why did Jesus do this? Was it really just for like hashtag the memes? Was it just for him to get his point across? Was there something deeper happening here? Um, like, was it truly just a metaphor? Did this tree die for a metaphor? Uh, what could it mean? What could it mean? Figs playing too much Fall Guys. Exactly. Just Fall Guys into the ground. So that would be my contemplation. And I don't think, I don't think Czech would have an answer. I think Czech would just be like, what is this guy's deal? Like this is, this is so confusing because I think that, I think the Czech wants to understand Jesus, but is having trouble wrapping their mind around Jesus um, and wants to make the decision for themselves because here's a lot of the Pharisees talking, all the Pharisees can't stand him. Nimrod and the other people are like, this Jesus guy is something else. And, uh, and Czech is just like, what on earth am I gonna do? How am I gonna do this? Who is this Jesus guy? And what is going to happen if he just goes around uh, just cursing trees? Like, what's the deal? This is not going to go well. Okay. I wonder, should I do roll for reflection or explore more? Which one first? I'm going to do roll for reflection. Maybe we'll do roll for, roll, roll for reflection twice. Okay. Let's give it a good roll. Oh, it's a six. Draw a picture. Um, I actually have channel points for that, so... Okay, let's draw a picture of this, of this, uh, of these tree leaves yeeting off. Very appropriate time to draw a picture, really. So, or maybe I should draw the like gnarled tree that I've been envisioning this whole time. That might be fun. That might be a fun thing to do, a fun little exercise. Since since I, it didn't exist in the iconography, I'll I'll make it myself. So let's. I think the fig trees are pretty thin. Let's look at, let's pull it up again so that I can see it again. Yeah, they're relatively thin with a wide base and lots of branches. So we're gonna have one, we're gonna have one like, it's almost gonna look um, not even Susian, but almost a little bit like Burton-esque.
Okay, I definitely made the branch a little too wide, but that's fine. It's interesting, they're almost turning out to look like um, petals of a leaf. Or like broccoli. And then we're just going to put all the leaves on the ground. Uh, so we actually set up... Oh, trouble you for moving the game? Of course. Um, we actually set up a Facebook community for players to share the pictures, poems, artsy stuff, and you would create while playing too. It's also a space to ask questions and be in community with other players. Can you link the group? I'm going to add ominous spooky clouds. I feel like you can't have a curse without spooky clouds, you know? We're gonna do like weird, like ghoulish energy radiating off of this. Okay, there's my ghoulish tree. There's my ghoulish fig tree with gnarled branches and grossness off of it. Offshoots and disgustingness. Boom jams. And all the leaves on the ground. Cursed fig tree. Cursed fig tree icon. Nice. All right. Now let's do our explore more. And then we'll, uh, then we'll have HMail on. Okay. Already, people have started to gather to see what Jesus will do. One zealot, a member of a Jewish sect who violently opposed the rule of Rome, among the crowd starts reciting scripture from the prophet Zechariah. Let's read it. Zechariah 9, 9 through 13. Come on, Zechariah. There we go. Kept going right past it. All of a sudden, I'd be to Matthew. All right, Zechariah 9, 9 through 13. Here we go. This is, again, the NRSV. Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you, triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. And as for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double. For I have bent Judah as my bow. I have made Ephraim its arrow. I will arouse your sons, O Zion, against your sons, O Greece, and wield you like a warrior's sword. Gnarly. Surely this is Zion's true king, the zealot begins. Surely Jesus will drive out the sons of Rome. Nimrod looks at you curiously as if to see whether you agree. What do you think about the zealot's claims that Jesus is the true king of Jerusalem or that he will drive out Rome? Do you engage the zealot's remarks out loud, keep your thoughts to yourself, or share them quietly with Nimrod away from the crowd? So I'm going to say that Czech absolutely knows that scripture. First off, Pharisee, right? So very well versed, knows the scriptures, knows the stuff, definitely has studied it before. And, uh, and, is, and is deeply into it. So knows the scripture right away um, from Zechariah and is feeling pretty conflicted because like this stuff's kind of happening. It's kind of happening. It's kind of going on, right? Like the, the cult thing, the donkey thing, there's a lot going on. Like a lot of the, a lot of the precursor stuff is happening, uh, but the Jesus that he has seen so far does not necessarily match up with the understanding of the ancient scriptures. So he's kind of like, some of it works, 
Some of it works, but some of it does not work. Like some of it is not so great. So I'm going to say he's probably like, but what about the rest of it? He's going to say out loud to this zealot and be like, well, what about the stuff that doesn't add up? Like, what about the things that aren't there? What about the things that don't quite match up? Um, and he's going to, he's going to kind of speak that uh, out to the zealot who uh, I'm going to say the zealot is zealot is pretty confident and is, and is going to kind of like just talk over me. That's what I normally get out of the, out of the zealotry. Uh, so I'm going to say he's going to talk over check and just continue to to speak it pretty loudly. Uh, and I'm going to say that at that point, check will probably quiet down, probably quiet down. But he definitely has like said his piece and then is going to kind of like contemplate him like, man, some of that stuff, some of that stuff is almost too right to be wrong. But other parts of it just can't uh, circle that square like it just doesn't quite work. And he's going to have trouble. He's going to have trouble going to have trouble working it out. It's going to be a little bit of a challenge, um, but it's going to start raising some questions. I think he's going to contemplate because we literally just talked about the cursed fig tree. He's going to contemplate that cursed fig tree and be like, he is powerful. That is a powerful guy. He made a tree just die. Just the, the leaves just yeet to the ground out of nowhere. So he's definitely going to be curious. It's going to continue to drive in his mind like maybe the Pharisees are wrong and maybe this Jesus guy really is right. But what does it mean? But the zealot's not quite right either. So he's kind of like, there's, there's there's somewhere in the middle. He's still contemplating that nuance, um, like the open Pharisee that he is, and something just doesn't add up. Very cool. Uh, and I would say afterwards with Nimrod, he definitely sits down and they talk about it because he's close with Nimrod. He's grown up with Nimrod. Nimrod also knows the scriptures, uh, and they're going to, they, they talk about it. They talk about it, they hash it out, and he's going to tell him these things that I've told you guys. So you guys are kind of my Nimrod in the story, which is kind of fun. Um, and that's going to be the conversation. Okay. Shall we roll again? I feel like we should. Let's roll again. Roll one more time. It's three. Lectio Divina. Let's see what they want us to do for Lectio Divina. Um, that's the study of scripture. See appendix for link to upper room description. This is a way of reading the scripture that slows us down, dwells, or helps us to dwell on a small piece of scripture to see what it is to say to our lives today. Read the scripture through from beginning to end. If it's too long, more than 10 verses, cut it down a bit. Read it through again. The next time you read, look for a word that pops up or calls to you. Write that down. Give yourself a minute or two of silence to reflect on that word. Read the scripture again this time and see if there's a word or phrase that stands out for you. Write that down. Uh, give yourself a minute or two of silence to reflect on that phrase. Read the scripture again. Spend five minutes journaling about the significance of the word and the phrase. Read the scripture again. Uh, Shalomi, my homies. What's up? Alternate gaming. How we doing? Um, H-Man, what scripture are we supposed to use? Are we supposed to use the one in the prompt? Is there another one we're supposed to use? Are we supposed to just find one? Because not all prompts have the scripture, I've noticed. Or maybe it's just day one. Okay. So contemplate Mark 11, 12 through 14. So we're gonna read it a couple times. The first time I read it, uh, since chat is here, why don't you guys participate too? Um, the first time that I read it, I'm gonna pause afterwards and type any words that stand out to you. So as you hear words, if there's a word that, uh, that really works, then um, type it in the chat. And I'm gonna pause, we're gonna contemplate. Uh, we'll come back together, I'll read it again. Type any words that stand out that time. Uh, we'll take a break. And then is it was it the third time they want us to write words? Yep. Yeah. So we've read it once, so we'll read it two more times, writing words, contemplate, and then read it one more time. Cool. Mark 11, 12 through 14. Uh, and you know what? We should probably do this in, in silence. <laughs> We should probably not have bloopy jams in the background, even though this is Twitch. Okay. On the following day, when they came from Bethany, Jesus was hungry. Seeing in the distance a fig tree and leaf, he went to see whether perhaps he would find anything on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. He said to it, may no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard it. So again, let's pause for like a minute. And uh, if you have any words that stand out, type them in the chat.
how often do you sit in silence on Twitch? <laughs> That's crazy. That's what I'm contemplating already. Uh, words, hungry, season, figs, season, and hungry. Let's read it again. Same thing. If you hear any words that stand out for you, they can also be phrases. Um, then type them in the chat. We'll take another minute of silence on Twitch. Oh, my goodness. Dead air. On the following day, when they came from Bethany, he was hungry. Seeing in the distance a fig tree in leaf, he went to see whether perhaps he would find anything on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. He said to it, May no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard it. Oh my goodness, I love how it's killing me. I feel like I'm holding my breath. <laughs> That's great. That's great. The silence is awesome. That's really fun on Twitch. That's a different a different experience than I ever had. Uh, I, I hope that um, I hope that you guys are, are a little uncomfortable. <laughs> because I am. Uh, let's see, some phrases. His disciples heard it. I'm latching onto that as well, H-Man. Uh, nothing but leaves, 100%. Steven, you did exactly what you're supposed to. Heard is a good word. He went to see if I love the inclusion of emotes into this. That's something that can only happen on Twitch. What a cool experience. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Ah, I love it. All right. Um, so now would be a good time to like journal. So I'm not going to ask you to do that in the chat unless you just feel particularly led to do that. But um, this would be the moment that you would take down notes. You would write down any highlights or things that are coming out. Um, I would probably write down that I'm uncomfortable with the silence, that I listen to so many, like I am always have a podcast going in my ear, I always have music going, I always have something going, and so sitting in silence with scripture is an important practice, um, something that I continue to contemplate as I enter into moments of Lectio Divina. Um, I would note the weirdness of this whole passage, this is one of the strangest passages of scripture to me still, uh, and so the idea of like, the disciples heard it is important, the fact that it was supposed to have fruit and didn't, um, the fact that it, it wasn't in season, but did have leaves for some reason. Like there's a lot, there's a lot going on here that's so strange. Um, and so I would contemplate on the strangeness of this scripture. Yeah. We'll read it one more time and then we'll have H-Man on. So H-Man, if you want to go ahead and hop into like the level two chat or something, I'll hop, I'll hop you in in, in just a second. Um, we'll read it one more time and this will be a prayerful one. So you don't have to pray, but if you are comfortable with praying, Treat this one as if it were a prayer. Treat this one as if it were actually coming before the scripture um, more sacred than we have the past couple times. On the following day, when they came from Bethany, he was hungry. Seeing in the distance a fig tree and leaf, he went to see whether perhaps he would find anything on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. He said to it, may no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard it. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Cool. All right. Music back, please. Before I crawl out of my skin. Oh, I love it though. Thanks be to God indeed. Um, so folks, again, uh, before we have H-Man on, because I don't know who will maybe have to hop off or have to go uh, as we continue to inch, in, inch, in, inch on in the day. Um, if you have any questions, drop them in the chat. I'll, I'll read them off to H-Man and he can enter into a conversation here with us. Um, VAUMC.org slash RP the G. VAUMC.org slash RP the G. Go download it. Get into it. Um, we would love to support them and share that with them. Um, I don't think that's it, Sneaky. <laughs> I think you got a prior copy paste there. 
I do that all the time and it makes me real happy to see somebody else do it. Oh man. Okay. Let's have H-Man hop in. Let's have H-Man hop in. Uh-oh, I hear myself. Okay. Let's see. You should be able to hear me now. Yeah, I can hear you. And we should be able to hear you. I'm going to see if I can pull you up in Twig. Dope. I love when things work. Uh, so let's take that away. And cool. Nice. All right, so now we've got you on and into the chat here. So folks, if you have any questions for H-Man, H-Man, uh, first question from me is going to be, why don't you introduce us to the writers? Do you have that down, the team that worked on this, like the general team? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let me grab this real quick. So the writers did everything. I really just came up with the idea and said, hey, this is what I want to do, and they did all the work. So I'm going to show, this is the last page of, this is the back page of RP, RP the G. I don't know if this is, I got to see if it's going to be in the the frame there. That's the team that did it. Um, and they are Reverend Jenny, Jeannie Boyles, Reverend Annalise Stevings Jennings, Jason Brugman, M. Angel Cattle, Cat, I, I'm not going to butcher his last name. He's told me I could call him Cat. Um... Reverend Kimberly Barker Brugman and Reverend Taylor Mertz. So they're all Virginia clergy and lady um, who worked really diligently on this project. That's awesome. So I think it's a super cool project and I love the involvement of all of the different bodies. I think that's that's what makes it really novel is like a lot of the stuff that um, I find being done on the internet is typically like done by like a one-off or like a person that's just like got a passion for something. And so I think it's cool that the conference is taking their energy and putting it towards something. So I think that's really great. Uh, let's say, um, so it's out officially. It is on VAUMC.org. Yeah, you can go to VAUMC.org slash RP the G. Slash RP the G. It's not officially uh, started yet because it'll start with Ash Wednesday. We've already said that. That was going to be my next question. But it starts on Wednesday, goes for the full 40 prompts. Um, what, what options do you see as far as like, I know it's a solo TRP, TTRPG, but like what options do you think it could be used with them? Like, do you think, is it, a, is it applicable for Twitch? Like, could we do something with Twitch or uh, I know there yeah, are I mean, Twitch streamers in the chat right could, now. So like, is what could, what could be the use there? Yeah. I mean, you could definitely do it on Twitch. Um, I mean, you just kind of showed how you would do it. You could do one prompt a day. Like anytime you stream, you should be like, Oh, we're going to do a prompt today or today's prompt. Um, and kind of do it as like a follow along with your character check um, throughout the events of what's going on in Holy Week. Because um, you definitely hit all the big ones. You do everything from the entry of Jesus into the Jerusalem all the way to the resurrection. Um, and so it, it very much makes a narrative because the gospel is told in a narrative way. Um, I know Methodist Gaming did yesterday on stream. So it's definitely an applicable thing on stream. Another thing that you could do with it is in the appendix, there are group rules. Um, so if you're a youth group or you have a small group or you want to like get together with some people and you're like, you know, I think it'd be more fun to play as a group. There is a set of group rules that we have did. It, it is originally designed to be a solo thing, um, mostly because we want you to like really that role for reflection is supposed to be kind of like a for yourself um, time. Um, but there are group rules. Um so yeah, I think I think there's definitely different ways you can play it. The one thing that I've been telling people is play it your way. If there's a rule that you're like, you know, this doesn't make a whole lot of sense in my context, or I just don't want to play it that way, it's 100% whatever you want to do. So if you can find a way to modify, modify it so that you can do it however you want to do it, I would suggest it. And then maybe email me and let me know what you, how you modified it just so I can like in the future know. Yeah, and you said there's a Facebook group. So the Facebook group might be a good place to drop like tips and tricks or things you're learning as you're working through the process. I know that on the landing page, so VAUMC.org slash RP the G, there's like, you've put together a how to play um, kind of guide, like a video for folks that are truly 100% new to TTRPGs and are super uncomfortable with the whole idea of like approaching it. It's yeah. very approachable the way you put it together. But I think that that's a, if you're confused or concerned about like, 
not understanding the rules, you've put together a thing for that. Um, and so that's something important for people to know. Not only is the download there, but that's also available. It's also available in a podcast form. So you've got it kind of all over um, as far as how people are dealing with it and then the Facebook group yeah. uh, for people to interact with it. And, and that, that was very intentional. On that yeah, we wanted to make it as accessible as possible. I know a lot of people when they hear RPG, they automatically assume like Pathfinder or Dungeons and Dragons. And like some people might not be comfortable doing that stuff. Um, so I just put it out there, super accessible to everyone. It is not on the level of like Dungeons and Dragons or anything like that. Right. Yeah. So, well, um, you know, I think there are definitely ways of making it even more like, like that if you wanted to, um, yeah. probably, probably not exactly as it needs to be, but I think there are definitely elements of other TTRPGs that if you like, you could try and bring in, um, you know, if you wanted to work on like an actual character sheet, I would love to see someone from that, like that just take this and run with it and build like a character sheet. Like how cool would that be to have somebody Ooh. that's then playing it and is like, I think this would be a neat way to, to adapt a character sheet for this particular thing. Um, for so sure. I'd love to see more about what people are going to do with it, how they're going to run with it. I hope that Facebook page populates a lot of really interesting feedback um, and resources of people interacting with it. Mm -hmm. I'm, excited. I'm really excited to see all of the like uh, pictures that people draw. Um, I know there's a few prompts that are like paint something, mm -hmm. or like uh, I like we have a few like write a poem. We even have one that says like write a song. Um, so I definitely think that I'm really interested to see what people come up with too, like the creative aspect of it. Awesome. Uh, so what what else do we need to know? What else could what else could we? You've mentioned the appendix. You've mentioned that there's group rules. Um, it lays out all the information pretty straightforward in the, in the beginning. I read through the rules before stream. I didn't want to read them on stream cause I didn't feel yeah. quite right, but it explains through all the different, like Lectio Divina, Visio Divina, um, all the aspects that you should know are in there somewhere, either in the front or in the appendix. Um, what are we missing? What, what do we need to know? Anything else? I mean, I think you hit everything. The big thing is just, you know, play your way. Um, if you want to play it a certain way, do it. Don't let the rules hold you back. Um, the rules are more there as a guideline. Um, the, I mean, the big thing is make your character do the prompts. Uh, the big thing is we say do your explore mores in character and then your role for reflection as your personal self. Um, that's the big thing that we've been kind of hit, trying to hit home. Um, and just, you know, enjoy it. Share it with friends. We, we made it free for a reason. We want everyone to play it. Um, we don't want anyone to feel like it, we're like gatekeeping it. Um, so just enjoy and, and play as much as you want. I mean, I've had friends who have said that instead of doing one prompt a day for Lent, they're going to play it multiple times um, and try to do different perspectives each time. Um, and, you know, I'm a lady, so like I have no, like, I didn't go to Bible school. I didn't go to Bible college. So when we first started, um, Reverend Kim Barker Brugman, she has been our spiritual formation, spiritual practice person. She's the one that like kind of came up with like Lecto Divina, spiritual or Visio Divina. I never heard of any of those things. Um, and so this is a really cool tool that I have also used as a way to learn different ways of prayer and different ways of reflecting on scripture. Um, and I think technically the RPG, like the entire thing is technically considered a um, Ignatian prayer. But you can find a bunch of information. There's a whole. The reason we have in the uh, rules internet is because if you are connected to the internet, you can click on the hyperlinks. And so in the appendix, we have a whole like list of links that are upper room resources to figure out more about different types of prayer, um, different kind of tools that you can use when you're doing your role for reflections. Yeah, I think there is. There's a ton of that overlap of of uh, of, of div school learnings and spiritual practices that I I, I gleaned from my time there. And I'm excited to see a way of transferring that praxis from a pastoral standpoint into a laity standpoint, into the community. So I think that in and of itself is super helpful. Um, just providing another way for people to experience and for people to enter into like a, a relationship with oneness and spirituality in that way. So I'm excited to see how people continue to use it. I have a question from the chat from Sneaky Pigs who says, how can we help spread the word about RP the G? Uh, I mean, social media is a big thing. Uh, you know, when I'm, this VOD gets clipped, maybe share it with a friend and say, hey, it's a really cool thing coming out. Um, word of mouth is big. If you go to your church on Sunday, 
tell people, Sunday school classes, youth groups. Um, if you want to put out a billboard and you got the money for it, go for it. <laughs> awesome. I love it. Well, I'm excited to see how, how stuff continues to come out there. Uh, so you said role play the explore mores, but do a personal reflection for the actual like role for reflections. Yeah. So for role for reflection, we want you to do that as like Nate, mm -hmm. um, just as a, a kind of like a spirit led kind of bringing you back into the Lenten season. Um, I mean, you could do it in character if you really want to, but like I said, it's totally how you want to play. Um, we're, we're trying to give people as much freedom as possible. So obvious, like hot button uh, FAQ questions. Does this cost anything? No, nope, totally right? free. Totally free. Do you have to be a Methodist to download it? No, yeah. no, no, no denominational linking other than the fact that it's produced by VAUMC. Feel free to use it regardless of denominational background. Um, at least the bits that I, I, I did today, I mean, even they feel, like you said, super Ignatian. They're, they're very much out of our kind of Catholic heritage, of our praxis heritage. Um, so it might be, uh, it, it's really an ancient practice that we're making new. Um, yeah. Let's see, another obvious question that I'm thinking of. You don't have to be a pastor to do it. You can be a laity. You can be any level of, of biblically literate. Do you have to be a gamer to do this? Do you have to understand anything about games? No, oh. right? Super straightforward. Um, so I think all it, it checks all the boxes. I think you've made it super accessible, and uh, I look forward to sharing it with yeah. more people. Um, I think it, to go back to what you're saying. Like I don't even think you have to be a Christian to play it. Like yeah, it 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 introduces you to the story of Holy Week. If you've never heard the story of Jesus and how he died for our sins, I mean, this is a great way to do it. That isn't like super down your throat, like Christian. Um, we made it as f we just basically follow the story of the gospel. So I think you'll read through most of Mark while doing it. Awesome. Well, my goal is for you guys to get enough traction on this thing that you start creating a custom RP the G uh, tabletop book that I can download and then I can do the do the the journal and do the hardcover book and keep that on my bookshelf. That's my goal for you guys. Yeah, I yeah, want we're merch. Looking for that. I want hashtag merch like that hat hat hat. I want my I want my own hat 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 and then I also want an RP the G um hardcover bound fancy copy and dice set. We need a custom RP the G dice set. Until we get that I'm not happy. Yeah. Oh yeah. And so we also so the group that put this together we've kind of formed a not a, I don't want to say committee um, but we've like called ourselves the pilgrimage project. And so we've decided that if this is um, successful enough, people download it, we're going to come back next year and do a true tabletop RPG. Um, not in the season of Lent, but just like a real as Dungeons and Dragons levels. We can get it. Awesome. Awesome. Well, there you go. You heard it get here. Folks. If you want, if you want the, project. uh, the D and D, TTRPG edition, then uh, you need to support this. Go download it. Uh, download it on every computer you own, all your phones, everything. Get the word out there. Share it on all your social medias. Go ahead and get this TikTok viral. If it's not blowing up on TikTok, then uh, then we oh, yeah. have not met our goal. Um, so thank you, H-Man. Appreciate you being here and appreciate the Pilgrimage pro Project for putting this together. VAUMC for putting this together. You heard the team. They're present in the download. So um, go support them wherever if they want to be supported. Today. I don't know if they all want to be found on social media, but maybe they do. Um, so go support them and their creative endeavors. Um, I know at least, didn't you say Annalise was, was one of the people? Yeah, Annalise, says she's she's my like RP the G, uh, RPG expert. She's the one I brought in to give me the like help with rules with Dungeons and Dragons and, and that whole aspect. So She's definitely cool and somebody to support and find. She is, uh, we're, since we're in the midst of February, she always does her, for Black History Month, a uh, black cosplay of the day. Uh, and that's mm -hmm. always super cool. Annalise is a really cool person. Um, so uh, check that out. Check all the groups out and support them. All right. Any last thoughts or notes? Feel good? Thank you for playing it. Yeah, absolutely. We were glad to have done it, and I think it went super well. All right. Everybody say bye, H-Man. Hey guys, thank you. Okay, dope. Well, there you go, folks. So that is um, that is RP the G. If you want to go download it, I'll shout out the shout out the link one more time. Vaumc.org slash RP the G. We'll put us out on uh, on all of our social medias 
and all of that sort of stuff. But do be sure to support them, encourage them. Um, doing good work like this is really tough. Um, but the more we can cross over with the nerd sphere um, and our faith, the better it gets. So um, send this to all your resources. Uh, send this to the people that, that, are, that would be willing to play along. Um, I'm sure if you want to do what we've done and do a demo session on your Twitch stream, that's not going to be a problem. If you want to ask for permission, HMAN is on our Discord, um, or you can see HMAN in the chat. So send a DM, uh, send an email to the VAUMC, ask, but I'm sure you really don't need to ask permission. Feel free to just play that game uh, on your streams and highlight it and let other people know. Um, fill out your resources, uh, tap all the, the people that you can, let them know that this is happening. This is a super cool way of doing a contemplative praxis uh, over the series of Lent. So thank you guys. I appreciate you being here. Appreciate everybody hanging out with us on this stream. Uh, I have got a busy day, so I'm going to get back to it. Um, but I will be cutting this up for YouTube. So if you are watching right now, feel free to say, hey, YouTube. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube right now, drop down in the comments. Let us know if you're going to play RP the G. Uh, we would love for you to support that and share that. Of course, the trash truck is here right now. Uh, I'll wait. I'll wait just a moment for them to stop. I think they're done backing up. We'll hope. Um, so we're going to end this video as we always do with our three things that we believe to be true about every single one of you out there. Number one, we believe that God loves you. Number two, we love you. Uh, number three, we believe that you, yes, you matter. You're a person of sacred worth. The world is a better place. Why? Because you are in it. Folks, that and until the next time that I see you, bye-bye. And now for Twitch. Twitch, you've already heard you've already heard the shtick, so we're gonna go find somebody to raid. I never saw the ads come up. I don't know what the deal with the ads is. Maybe I still have to update my thing. Uh, but it sure should have popped up and it sure didn't. Um, I never saw one pop up in the top corner, so. Ay, ay, ay. Uh, Steven, you're a movie, movie game. Steven, are you still here? Let's see if I can ping you. Because I definitely, I definitely still need to do your, uh, your movie, movie game. I know I meant to do it in between the H-Man time and then I totally got distracted. If you're not here, I'll remember. I'll remember for next time. We'll make sure it happens. All right, let's go find somebody to raid. If Steven comes back, then good. If not, then uh, then we'll just find somebody to raid. So let's go see who's streaming right now. Ooh, the lift is playing Inscription? Oh, I'm here for that. Let's do it. I am all here for some Inscription. All right, let's raid the lift. Uh, folks, if you do me a favor, we really do believe those three things that we said to be, to be true. We believe that God loves you, we love you, and you matter. So be sure to let the lift and the lift's community know that they matter. When you uh, followed our channel, then you uh, would have gotten the emote that says you matter. So if you would do me a favor, spam that in the chat whenever we raid. Folks, again, God loves you. We love you. You matter. Until the next time that I see you, which will be on Monday. Well, we have a normal week next week, I hope. I hope I don't wake up sick, man. Uh, so we're going to go raid. God bless. Thank you for being here. Please do let the left and their community know that they matter. Till the next time that we see you. Bye-bye.